Today's guest is Deborah Wayne. She's the founder and CEO of the International Chronic Pain Institute. Um, she is a world renowned energy healer specializing in the high speed healing method for rapid release of chronic pain, acute pain, anxiety, depression, trauma, battles with weight binge eating, chronic fatigue, and many other conditions. Um, Deborah has earned degrees and certifications in psychology, hypnotherapy, and chemical dependency counseling. And she has 35 plus years practicing and teaching meditation. Um, her specialty is helping people find and remove the hidden reasons that lie at the root of pain, symptoms, and suffering that don't often show up on diagnostic tests. So if you're not familiar with energy healing, you're going to find out a lot in this episode about how that works, um, what the philosophy fees are behind it and the experiences that she's had in working with people doing energy work, um, especially overcoming trauma. I find that this is a really powerful thing to look into. Um, she personally has helped tens of thousands of people in 150 countries um, to get their energy and their lives back on track. She's a highly sought after speaker and the number one bestselling author of why do I still hurt? So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Here is Deborah Wayne. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Okay. So Deborah, chronic pain, can you please fill us in on your, honestly, your life's work on chronic pain? Like what is going on? Why are so many people dealing with so much pain? It's, it's unbelievable. Literally millions and millions of people and you, you go to any grocery store and you see the aisle of drugs and products and right by the counter. So, you know, it's on everybody's mind and mm -hmm. here's what's happening. We live in a world that is just obsessed with the physical reality and the body is a big giant feedback machine mm. and it's giving us feedback about our emotions, which we live in a world that says, oh, don't bring those emotions here. Mm -hmm. Big boys don't cry. It's unprofessional. Leave those at home. So mm -hmm. we're living in a world where there's a lot of stress. Everything's super cyber fast. We're processing constant information and we're trying to deny an entire part of ourselves which you can't deny because every decision we make, every choice we make, I don't care if it's what to eat for lunch, who to marry, what university to go to, it's based on emotion. Mm -hmm. It's based on feelings. Mm -hmm. And so here we are, we're walking around, we're having all these experiences, we're trying to process and digest it, and it's turning inward and imploding and coming out sideways as symptoms for many people because they've never learned how to examine their thoughts and discern what's true from what's mm. false, what's going to serve me, what's going to harm me, what am I yep. obsessing about all day long that's actually creating pain and emotional pain in particular. And then with those emotions, what do I do with them? 
Well, I'll drink them away, drug them away, smoke them away, sex them away, travel, shop, whatever it is, yep. because I don't want to feel them. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm I, I, sorry to interject, but I like I have been talking about this nonstop lately. Like I literally just had this conversation with my sister yesterday. Um, our mom is, is 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 passing. She's she's declining, and we both flew out to Texas, and it was very hard. And um, we were going through all of her sentimental things, and my sister's processing all these emotions. She's seeing pictures from like her ex husband when they were all married in the family, plus my mom stuff, and and we were like running late and all of these, and she's like. Like, I feel like I can't even, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just kind of like, I'm kind of freaking out right now. And, and I was like, okay, let's breathe together. Let's like breathe really deep. And then I was like, put your hand on your heart and just like, feel everything, like cry, like, like dive into it, like allow yourself to feel it, you know? And, and she started crying and it was just like this beautiful moment for both of us. And I, I, I'm just like, oh, the universe, because I, <laughs> I knew when I saw that we, you know, we had this interview coming up today. I was like, that's going to come into play. And I think our avoidance, honestly, as a health coach, Coach, I'm like our avoidance of processing our emotions is in my opinion, it, the, the most toxic and corrosive thing that's happening to the body. It it's, is. I mean, it's all starting in the mind. Number one thing that is causing pain and it practically guarantees the pain will never leave. It will get bigger and bigger and yep. bigger. It's just like your sister. I'm freaking out. What that means is I'm holding on to something that I'm not willing to feel. Mm -hmm. I'm not willing to process. I'm not willing to feel it and let it go because Here's the thing in my little, my little mantra, everything's energy. Everything is energy. Emotions and thoughts are made of energy. There are forces real as electricity. And if we ignore them, it builds up because mm -hmm. energy needs to be moving. It needs right. to be flowing freely. And we go, oh, no, no, not now. Got to keep it together. Got to stay in control. Yeah. It's so crazy how it's, 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 you know, and I, I'm a victim of the, or not victim, but I do this too. Like I get embarrassed when yeah. I start crying. Isn't that sad? <laughs> We're having programmed to yeah. not, not show the vulnerability that somehow we're going to lose love, lose approval. Mm -hmm. And this is like rampant in our mass consciousness. Yeah. People, and particularly men, the poor men are never allowed. They've got to be a rock all the time. And, and women too, because women are, you know, holding it together and keeping, and they're working and they're taking care of kids and they're doing a, a lot of things. And they, most people I find that I've worked with are afraid if they start to cry or feel or express emotions like anger, that one, it will never stop. Two, mm -hmm. it will feel out of control and they'll lose control and they'll do something there that they don't want to do. Wow. wow. They've confu confused the feeling with the behavior. So they think if I feel the feeling, I'm going to punch someone or I'm going to harm someone when it's actually feeling the feeling is separate from any behavior. And you have a better chance of not doing anything outrageous or, or harmful if you feel the feeling. Mm -hmm. It's when we don't feel it that it builds up and builds up. And then all of a sudden, just at it seemingly nowhere, it just bursts. And that's when it, you know, it gets dangerous. That's how violence occurs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I have, um, I have three sons and the first one and the youngest one are emotional, right? They just, they react, they they're, wear their emotions on their sleeve. You never have to wonder what they're thinking. Um, and my, my middle son is, is quite pretty much the opposite. He's very, very even keeled, very, but when he loses it, he loses it. Right. It's like, he has just been like, holding it and holding it and holding it, holding it until he just turns into this like just fountain of tears and exasperation, you know? And, and I see that and I'm, it's, it, it's hard for, I'm like, I'm, I wish he would just kind of process it as he went. And, you know, I guess my, my thought is, you know, let's say you're processing a, a thought that's like, you perceive that there's going to be a lot of pain associated with the feeling of the feeling. Is it, do you believe that people, we're just running from the temporary pain so much that we're causing more long-term pain? Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. See, that's the thing. It's from the repetition of not expressing mm -hmm. thoughts and the emotions that we need to resolve. And so we just repress and deny and suppress and stuff and stuff. That was my story too. And eventually it will come out sideways as a symptom. It may be somebody's like, why do I have these migraines? Or why can't I sleep at night? Or why does my stomach hurt? And maybe it's food allergies. Well, maybe it's emotions. 
Okay. So I want to pick your brain on this a little bit, um, blending kind of this, the energetic, the quantum physics, like with, with the like practical science that most people know, like for, from my perspective, one thought that I've always thought is like, well, of course that you're, you're going to create inflammation in your body from chronic stressful thoughts because your adrenaline is going to be high all the time, which is going to produce cortisol. So now you have inflammation just waiting to happen. And on top of it, you're depleting your adrenals of magnesium and these vital minerals to keep you running optimally. And then on top of it, you're, you're sending blood flow to your extremities so that you can run or fight. So you're not sending them to your gut. So your gut health goes poor. Then you can't make neurotransmitters to help your mood. And it all just keeps trickling down and down and down. But I'm, I'm not as familiar with the, the quantum physics, the energetic fields. Uh, can you, can you explain to us a little bit more about how that works? Yeah. It's so exciting. This is really fun to your science that makes everything. It, it's a whole new way of looking at it, but it makes everything make sense. And I agree with everything you've just shared, and it's that's exactly the formula. But the precursor to all of this lies in the biofield. You know what the heck is that? So um, a group of physicists discovered recently in the 1980s that they classified an entirely new field in physics called an information field. It's also been uh, termed a, a torsion field, a spin field. Uh, and then the NIH, the National Institute of Health in 1992, they studied this and just decided, yes, there really is this field. And they, they're the ones that coined the term biofield cool. to represent a field of energy and information that surrounds every living thing, including our bodies. Now we live in a huge gigantic field, one giant field that we're all in. Like, a, like the ocean, we're all droplets in that one giant ocean. But around your body, and it's not separate from your body. So people have the idea that your body ends at the skin, it doesn't end. Your physical body, if you were to look at it under a high powered piece of equipment, you would see it's vibrating particles, of energy and light. And this energy and light actually holds information. Now this is vibrational information. It's uh, really interesting because then beyond the skin, you actually extend out into a more subtle vibration that is this biofield. The only reason the physical body looks physical is it's vibrating at a particular frequency that's slow enough to create density that you can touch and see and, and know it's there. And so this field that extends out is more subtle energy which is why people say, what are you talking about? I can't see it. I only believe what I can see and touch, but that's not accurate. I mean, we, are, we know dogs, for example, they're seeing and hearing things that we don't hear. We don't consider that make-believe. This field is measurable. There's equipment that comes out of Japan and Russia that actually can measure the information in the field. The first one I believe to ever photograph the field was the late Dr. Valerie Hunt from UCLA and she had a lab for 40 years where she did research and she showed very clearly, uh, it, she took oscilloscopes and camera film and I don't know how people come up with this stuff, but she was able to put together with computers a way to show, to take a picture of the field and it showed these areas around the body in different colors. And you could see where there were disturbances in the field, where it wasn't flowing properly. And she, again, also really emphasized that as she worked with people, she could see that emotions were probably the biggest cause of the disturbances in the body, mm -hmm. because these frequencies of emotions were disturbing the field first. Here's the real nugget of gold that all this field research has done is it showed us that the field is the precursor to anything that shows up in the physical. And it will be in the field first, often years before it ever manifests physically. So it's, the good news is that any, everything is changeable. We know everything, energy, everything's energy and energy never dies, but it changes form all the time. So if you have disturbances in your field, they're changeable. If it's already manifested physically, it's changeable. And Dr. Hunt was able to show constantly how with different therapies, as people released the emotions and the thoughts and the patterns and the habits they were manifesting, 
you could see the change reflected in the field. Beautiful. So much I could, I could say about all of this. It's really the key to health because um, if you think about dealing with it before it would ever show up, my God, there's nothing greater than that. We don't have to wait till there's a health crisis. Mm -hmm. And every thought we think and every emotion we have is being recorded in the field. This is what is so key about it. It feels like a recording device. So imagine everything that you've been exposed to since you were in the birth canal, maybe even beforehand, was being imprinted in this field. And it's making a template that's creating the physical reality that you're experiencing. And so you're gathering experiences throughout your whole life. People are saying things to you, doing things you're saying, hearing. Mm -hmm. It's all becoming your body. It's becoming your life. Mm -hmm. Especially those thoughts and emotions that are repeated and repeated and repeated. Amazing. Okay. So are you familiar with the work of Dr. David R. Hawkins? Um, he has the, the scale that show, I, I believe this is the same thing that he's using when he shows like when you're in guilt and shame that you're that he, I, I don't know, at least from what I've seen from his diagrams, I think it might be the same thing. He's showing that you're in the lowest vibrational energies, guilt and shame will like prevent you from being able to get out bigger. And then also Joe Dispenza, I know in his book, becoming supernatural talks about similar concepts about the, um, how, when we are in stress, chronic stress and anxiety, we're actually taking from the field where we we're needing we're pooling. And then when we are in abundance and enlightenment and joy and happiness that we're giving off energy to the field around us. Um, is that, does that, is that in alignment with your philosophies? Well, everyone's saying it slightly differently. I'm not sure we all have exactly hundred percent agreement on. I might have phrased that wrong, but that's what I got out of it anyway. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, Joe Dispenza is definitely on the same beam. And, um, as far as Hawkins, I believe I could be mistaken, but I believe he's measuring brainwave frequency. Is he? Okay. I couldn't remember. Emotions. Every emotion has a frequency, a particular frequency. Everything has a frequency and it's mm. not related to this. That's the whole point is that if we're, if we're constantly feeling afraid, for example, anxious, that creates a vibration. And the more you repeat and repeat and repeat, you're literally creating neural networks in your brain that get addicted to the vibration and the the feeling mm. of the fear releases a chemical just mm. like you were saying earlier in of stress a, a literal chemical that relates to different organs to your immune system your nervous system and we get hooked on this stuff even mm. it's like a drug even though it's fear or anger or resentment whatever it is and so we have to become more consciously aware mm -hmm. of what we are feeding what frequency we're feeding and which lawn we're watering, literally, because mm -hmm. we can change this. We're not victims of it, but people feel like victims of it, especially if they grew up in an environment where home got imprinted. Everybody's home feeling quality gets imprinted when they're mm -hmm. little, before the age of eight or nine. We don't know what's true from what's false. We're just taking right. it all in like a sponge. And if right. you were in a home where it was, highly critical, where it was violent, where there was abuse or neglect or screaming and yelling, whatever it was, you imprinted that as home. That's, that's normal for you. Yep. You will carry that vibration until at some point in your life, if you either start to look around and go, how come not everyone's thinking and feeling like this? How come I have pain or I'm always attracting the same type of person or the same experience over and over until you examine this, you think it's normal and you will actually vibrationally match up to people, places, and experiences that resonate with your vibration. We, we sync up with the, a similar vibration. It's why you find yourself living in certain cities or having certain friends. There's an agreement. It's unconscious many times, but there's a resonance. Mm -hmm. And like vibration definitely attracts like vibration. Yeah. Like, so, so, okay. So, so if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I want to find out like what my unconscious like vibration, like I don't, what I don't realize what's going on underneath, like where do, where do you start to even start to discover what's going on with you? This is why the body is so amazing. The body is telling you what you unconsciously believe and feel 
And this is why people say, well, I don't want this symptom. I don't want this pain. I don't want debt. I don't want weight. I don't want this or that. But if you're manifesting it, it's got the key. It's, it's got a message in it for you that if all you do is try to cut it out or drug it out or make it stop and go away, you're missing the very information it's here to bring you. Mm. And so you look at the feedback that your body's giving you. And you, you know sometimes it's hard to do yourself. You, some, most people need a, a guide for a while at least so they right. really get a new perspective on how to interpret the body properly. But the, the truth is that if you listen carefully to the body and you learn how to ask the right questions, your body, you have all the answers within you. And trying to just get rid of something is the opposite of what you want to do. The body, yeah. friend, your, I know people roll their eyes when I say this, but it's really the truth. Your pain is your friend. It's there to try to get your attention, which is why so many people I work with come to me and they say, oh, Deborah, I've tried everything. I have done this therapy and that and this and that, and, and nothing's worked. Why not? Because you're not going deep enough and you're missing the point of the pain. So I'm not suggesting you cope with it or live with it or manage pain. No, the pain won't release till you learn what it's there to try to show you. Mm hmm yeah, it's it's so it's so fascinating how these small levels of pain that we avoid, the small discomfort leads to these huge levels of pain and discomfort. It's like, you know, um I've I've been through some pretty huge life changes in, in my life. And I found that, you know, it was definitely true that the universe kept presenting like worse and worse and worse opportunity to learn. It was like, I'm, we're going to like make this loud and clear until you actually wake up and see what's going on with you, you know? And so in the body, it seems like the same way. It's like, it's, it, it's there all along, but it's like, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. I don't want to feel it until it gets so freaking loud that now you can't ignore it anymore. But it's, it is like for us that is happening for for our own good. It's trying to tell, it's just like, you know, like why, why do we have sensors on our fingers? Right. Like to feel a hot stove, like that, that pain is like warning you, Hey, you're going to melt your freaking fingers off. So like, don't do that. <laughs> exactly. It, you know, that is just spot on. And it doesn't matter if it's your life or your body or your health. It's all the same. Life is for us. Life is trying to get our attention. Life is always communicating with us. Yeah. We've learned to shut it off. Right. To try to uh, uh, ignore it. It's like having a two-year-old mommy, 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 look at me, listen to me. No, no, knock her. I'm not to knock her. I'm going to yep. ignore it. They scream louder and louder until they rip your clothes. I mean, it is going yep. to eventually just be so in your face. You have to say, okay, uncle, I give up. Yep. Okay. So when people come, come to work with you, like, what do you do? What's, what does your process look like? I'm so curious. Well, I have several ways I work with people sometimes one-on-one -on -one, and I also have a group program mm -hmm. and I work, um, I don't work in person. I have not worked physically in person for many years now. Uh, I work strictly virtually like this over zoom typically. and it's a combination of literally having an incredible conversation that's deep with people mm. and I ask them questions and I help them reveal from within themselves. I help them do three things. One, find and release the damaging thoughts that they've probably been carrying since childhood and don't even know that are showing up as a problem, a pain, a symptom of some kind. Number two, I help them find and release, just like you did with your sister, the emotions and how and where they get stuck in the body and how to learn from them, listen to them and release them. Mm -hmm. And then the third uh, area is the energy field. And I do that work for them. It's actually very easy and relaxing. And I'm able to rapidly scan the field, just like an MRI machine. And I can literally feel where there are disturbances in the body the biofield, whether I'm working one-on-one -on -one or with a group of thousands. And I, I bring in coherent waves, coherent frequencies that literally bring that person or that each individual's uh, biofield back into harmony, into what we call coherency. And then the field communicates with the body, the mind, the emotions, the spirit. 
And so, you know, we're not separate parts. When I work on people, it's working simultaneously on the yeah. physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic. And this is why people often have dramatic healing instantaneously. And some people, it's a slower, more gradual process. But even when it's slow in my world, it's nothing like most therapies where you could go for a year or longer and just still not be getting results because we're working at that precursor energetic level, which affects the thoughts, affects the unconscious beliefs and rapidly brings up the very thing that you don't want to feel or think about. It brings it up and moves it out. And, when, and what it also does is it changes the vibratory rate of the person's field. And think of it this way, um, the state like Hawkins, the state of joy and health is a, a different vibrational frequency than the state of anger and exhaustion and fear and frustration. So I'm changing their vibration to a, create a new pattern mm. that they're, if they work with me long enough, they hold that new pattern. And it is a different experience. You cannot change your vibration without having a different experience. And you cannot change your experience without changing your vibration. <laughs> it works both ways. So people are in these patterns that they're not realizing they're even contributing to. Yeah. So I work with them both through talking and through working in their field and then talking about what they experience and helping them see how they participate in the very thing they're trying to get rid of. And then we establish an entirely new way of thinking, feeling, and being in the world. And wow, I mean, we're talking massive transformations that people have. Yeah, that's a really amazing process because, you know, I, I, I do, um, the work of Byron Katie with a coach. And it's similar to that. What sounds like the first part of your process is where you're, 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 someone's asking you a lot of questions and causing you to dig deep and answer the things that you're just not going to do on your own because you want to avoid it and you don't want to go there and you don't even know which questions to ask yourself really. Right. So it, it's like when you're stuck in patterns, I don't know how you're going to get out of those by yourself because you just believe they're true. Like you just think that that's reality. And so that's what I have found to be the best part of the first first part of what you're doing is that it causes me to speak out loud the things that I'm not speaking. And I love the, your example of like the two-year-old or the toddler, because I use that in my own coaching too. I tell my clients to speak it, to release it because like, it's like when you have a toddler at a baby gate and they're like, please come like, Bleh! and you just, all they want is to be heard. Like, and you're ignoring them, ignoring them. And then, and they get louder and louder. And finally you listen and they're like, I saw a bug, you know, they just like wanted to tell you something. And it's just like, man, if you can just stop your life for a second, to just like, listen and, and to like communicate and be open. Like that changes everything. And, I, but I do think there's, there's value in that. In addition to just the, the energy stuff that you're doing it, that's amazing. I, I got to try it, but also on top of it speaking, um, it's, it, you get clarified, you get clarification, which is so important versus just like, it's still, you know, you're feeling something different, but you can't really put any words to it or any conscious thought to it. So I really love that you're combining the, yeah. the energy work with the, the speaking, you know, like the therapeutic part. Well, what I discovered two years ago, when I first started, I only did the energy portion. Mm. People had massive healing, many people, but there was a percentage of people that would call me sometimes a year later and they say, Deborah, the pain is back. Why is it back? And I like had to find out. So in every case, when I would have a conversation with these people, I would find out every time it was either a set of beliefs that they were accepting that was not true, or they had emotions that they were stuffing and they, it was coming out sideways to get their attention. So I decided, look, I, I, you know, what I really want for people, everyone I work with is to become a master of their own body, mind, and spirit. And to do that, you have to have all three areas addressed, the mind, the emotions, and the energy field. And this is why people sometimes get partial results. I've been heavily influenced by Byron Katie many, many years ago when she first started, uh, you know, I, I read her book and I'm like, my God, this is magnificent work. And, you know, I give her credit as well because she influenced the way I began to think differently. Mm -hmm. But if you just do, many people who've come to me have done that work, but they say, why do I still have pain? Right. And so you can't skimp. You can't just do work on your mind. You can't right. just work on your emotions. And even the people that have done emotional clearing techniques and 
mental clearing techniques, they're still, like you said, it's difficult to think yourself out of your own patterns. Right. You, you can't change the problem at the level of the problem. And, you know, I don't mean this in any way as a judgment. We all do it, myself included. Our best thinking got us where we are. Right. You need a leg up. Right. And you need somebody else to draw you up out of your own limited view. And I always say, you know, totally. we a tiny little view and we're never going to see the bigger view until we tap into cosmic consciousness, which is my ultimate goal for people. That's this multidimensional energy, high speed healing can do, especially once you get enough pain out of the way. Oh my God, you recognize I'm, com I'm completely connected. Mm -hmm. So much greater than my own personality. Mm, wow. Amazing. And you, you know what, back going back to what you were saying about how you would do the energy sessions with people, and then they would go, go back to their old patterns basically and cause the same pain again. And it reminded me so much of, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a personal trainer also. And so I know a lot of physical therapists, um, chiropractors, sports massage therapists. And what one thing they always complain about is they're like, I can come in here and I can like get things straightened out and get, get you aligned. But if you you go back and you start running or lifting and using those same patterns that got you here in the first place, then you, we're just going to have to keep doing this over and over and over. If, if you, if we can't get you in a place where you're changing your patterns and, and not causing the problem all over again, then, the, you know, that's when we can finally get you free from this thing. And so I'm hearing, you know, on the, on a mental, emotional, spiritual level, you're doing the same thing as like, you're like, okay, hold on. I got to like, you're kind of being the personal trainer and the physical therapist there, you know, <laughs> it's like, we got to get you in different movement patterns. So you don't keep causing the same, uh, mental, emotional, spiritual problem over and over and over. So really cool. Brilliant example. And you know, my background, I was a dancer in my, from the age of four till I was 30. And I learned as well, the body is carrying these patterns and really we are creating those patterns as we think. And as we move, even, you know, when you're exercising or dancing or moving in any way, examine what you're thinking about and what you're feeling. Mm it and what you're saying to yourself because guess what you know this it causes you to tense up certain muscles yeah to, you know, lean to a certain side the body tells the story of this and that's where these patterns come from and it's very interesting too just energetically how again everything's energy and we all carry masculine and feminine energy and the right side of the body is our masculine energy side the left side's the feminine energy side and it doesn't matter if you are in a female body or a male body, we all have both. And when I see people with um, either repeated injuries, sports injuries on the right side or the left, or I see people with you know issues, health issues on the right side or the left, these, this is again, the deeper questioning process that I have with people because we can find what's going on in their life with people or events. It's actually manifested physically hmm in the body and the body's telling the story of it. Wow. So, so are you saying, um, if so let's say, for example, you had injuries on the right side of your body, like every, are you saying, um, there's issues with that, the, the masculine energy or like I'll give you an example. So yesterday I worked with a client who has repeatedly had a right shoulder injury and excruciating pain. The right, the shoulders, now I'm generalizing, so I don't want to throw everybody in the same basket, but yeah. there are commonalities here. So the, the shoulders are um, typically represent responsibility, the mm -hmm. burdens we carry, and we hold on tight and we're just like, some people just carry the weight of the world. A right shoulder injury is often, or, or pain is often the, a, a male in their life that is causing them pain or pain if it's a female in their own masculine energy which often is about their work mm -hmm. and so this person in particular had um felt overly responsible for a male child that was old enough to know better and take care of himself and behave differently and wasn't and she was just carrying the weight of the world as if she, you know wanting to change and fix and you know all this with with the son and the pain would not stop because she was not letting go 
and allowing her son to, eat, to make his own mistakes and learn from his consequences. That's just one of many, many things. I've seen people exhibit, like, for example, all the symptoms of a heart attack and go to the ER and nothing shows up on a test. And they say, you're not having a heart attack, go home. And when I work with them and we start, to, I work with them energetically and then we start talking about it, all the symptoms, the pressure, the pain, the stress, they were pressuring themselves. They, they usually have heart issues, meaning love someone yeah. in their life that they love and care about. And there's pressure, pressure of some kind. And the person is not either speaking the truth to, you know, and sharing what, how they're feeling. They're not creating a boundary. They're not saying no when they're saying yes, when they mean no, there's a lot of possibilities, but they have a lot of, of love issue with somebody in their life. And this is manifesting. And I could go on and on with mm -hmm. pain and, you know, chronic fatigue and digestive issues and thyroid and migraines and insomnia. This is all usually related to people, places, and things happening in their life. Wow. Yeah. I, are you a believer in like, um, you know, like, like energy centers, chakras, things like that, like that, if one is closed off that another might become, you know, might block the energy flow there. Are you a believer in that kind of thinking or what is your thought with, uh, you know, chakras and, and energy centers and things like that? So, um, it's not that I don't believe in chakras. My work addresses the entire whole being mm -hmm. and separation of any kind. And so I think sometimes people get a little too mm, focused on the minutia of chakras hmm. um, rather than understanding they are a whole body, mind, emotional complex that's working together as one. And also, you know, when you get to these higher dimensions as well, uh, there is no separation. So it's not separate chakras that are, that I'm not working on separate chakras. Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But I will also say that I don't, I don't believe in blocks either. I believe that there are blind spots, not blocks. Mm -hmm. That your energy is a flowing complex. And in order for it to flow, um, you, can cut, you can cut the flow off. You can dim the flow by having one of these blind spots that we're talking about. Like if mm -hmm. you don't want to acknowledge how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't own up that someone's abusing you and you're just taking it. Mm -hmm. You um, are afraid to be seen in the world, be visible, speak your truth. If you're um, constantly filled with self-doubt and self-criticism, there are just so many reasons why we could appear to have a block, but it's actually a blind spot mm -hmm. in how we're participating in, in the very problem we're trying to get rid of. So that's why I I really, my, my real gift is helping people see and hear and feel and know how they are participating in the very thing they're trying to get rid of. And they can stop doing that. They can mm -hmm. change that. Love like, that. Rapidly. Rapidly love that. And, and I have one more question for you. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of an interesting question. So I, because I work on, on mindset with, with clients and, and, and I watch them have their own epiphanies. Um, some, sometimes what I see happen is they kind of want to go to everyone in their life who hasn't had that same epiphany and kind of like coach them on it, but in kind of like almost a mean way, like that's a victim mindset and you shouldn't be like that. You know, I, that's, that's a really common one that I like, you know, my clients will tell me they told to their husband or boyfriend or, you know, something. And I'm like, okay, well maybe, um, be gentle. So like, I guess my question is this, there's so many of us who are waking up. There's so many of us who are learning about these kind of concepts and we're fascinated by them and we're learning how much better we can make our lives as we get into healthier mindsets and all of this. What would you say to somebody who's going through that and, and, and how they can treat other people who may not have woken up to those things yet? What's the best way to, cause I know their intentions are good. Like they're like, I want to help you see that this is a really unhealthy mindset that you have, but without like badgering them <laughs> into it, any tips? on that so this is a brilliant observation and question thank you <laughs> the first thing i call this is the evangelical stage of of enlightenment we all go through it i did i i went through it i went home to convert my whole family and whoa did i get pushed back yeah and, uh, i've done it with friends and done it with you know i think everyone goes through the evangelical stage because it's so exciting when you yeah. 
this, you got the get out of jail card free. Yeah. Um, but here's the, here's the tip. In science, we know for every push, there's a pushback. And you are literally pushing onto someone. And what they hear typically is a judgment call. Like they feel, yeah. you feel you're judging them or what they hear is you're telling them they should be someone else. Yeah. Everybody wants to be loved and accepted unconditionally. Right. So wake up calls happen one person at a time just like planting flowers in your garden, you can't rush the process. You can't determine how fast it's going to grow. You just water it, water it, give it the sunlight and the soil. The greatest thing that you can do for anyone, and believe me, they're watching you, is be the, fill your life with so much joy and so much energy and vitality that everyone's like, what the heck did she do? Or did he do? I want some of that. Right. You're a walking encyclopedia for people. You're a neon sign without saying a word. And it's yeah. powerful not to say anything. Let people come to you. It's more about attraction than promotion. It's one thing if someone asks you for help, mm -hmm. but they don't ask. Unsolicited advice is rarely, if ever, taken well. Yeah. And you just don't do it. And, and I know it can be tough, especially mm -hmm. if you watch someone killing themselves and you know that they could have freedom. Uh, but Quite frankly, everyone's learning yeah. from earth school, even pain. Pain's a great teacher. And you don't want to take away one drop of it. If they, you can offer it initially. And if they say, no, thank you, you yeah. leave them alone because yeah. the, um, they need to learn from their pain. And when the pain is greater than the fear of changing, that's when people change. Yeah. I love what you said about, um, like they just want to be loved unconditionally as they are. Um, that's definitely something I'm constantly learning is even though, um, I can see, you know, I can see that maybe somebody hasn't been on the same path as me yet. And I can see these mindsets that might be causing them to suffer. Um, somebody taught me this once and it was really, really profound for me. And it was, how do other people feel around you about themselves? Yes. How do they feel about themselves in your presence? So is it, you know, you're like, mm, you need to work on this and I'm guilty of it. I do it. I turn into coach mode sometimes. And I'm like, ah, oh, stops, you know? Um, and because I know that when I, all I can think about is when they walk away, are they feeling like lit up about themselves? Did I help them see their divine qualities? Did I help them see their power? Did they walk away like freak? I am kind of awesome. Or did they walk away? Way, like crap I have so much freaking work to do until I can be as cool as Tara like you know oh that's so gross like I never want them to feel like that so I'm, I'm that's something I'm always like looking at in myself on how like how are they walking away from this conversation feeling and if they're feeling less than I I failed that is not that was not me being at my best you know so um I love that you're saying it's like just I think actually seeing people like see helping helping them holding up a mirror and saying like look at you like look how freaking beautiful and amazing you are is probably the most empowering thing you could ever do for someone. <laughs> so. agree. And, and, you know, because you and others that start to wake up will see things that people don't see in themselves, the best way to be a, a mirror is to share your own experience. Yeah. Yeah. And say the word you, but you know, <laughs> you, can, you can easily say something, Oh, you know, I used to feel like that. And then I discovered this about me and I did this and plant the seed yep. without ever saying, oh, well, you should. That's right. That's right. Set the live by example. Okay. So you have an event coming up. Can you, can you tell them about that? We'd love to. Thank you. It's called the day of high speed healing immersion. It's exactly what it says. You're going to spend the day with me and we're going to immerse ourselves in healing, in high speed healing, in two different sessions where we break it up into two uh, portions. So anywhere, anyone who lives anywhere in the world will be able to connect with me live and either in the morning section or the afternoon section, the whole day is like a sacred day designed to help anyone with any type of pain. It could be chronic physical pain. It could be anxiety, depression, panic attacks. It could be insomnia, migraines, headaches, binge eating. A lot of people now with this emotional eating going on and then you know, upset with themselves about their weight, 
Um, you could have relationship drama or um, not know what you're supposed to be doing with your life. Any type of pain is welcome. And everything that I teach during the day will apply to fill in the blank with any type of pain. And I will be revealing what I've found over all these years is that there are 13 top reasons that lie at the root of all pain. And I'm going to give those 13 reasons to you. I'm going to go into depth on the, the top three. And you'll have a worksheet that you can do an assignment to start really getting in touch with that unconscious stuff that you may be carrying around that you didn't know that's contributing to your pain and your patterns and your symptoms. So we'll be doing my energy healing method twice, once in the morning, once in the late afternoon. You'll be learning, you'll be writing, you'll be listening. I'll be taking live callers and helping people who feel stuck, especially those of you who've tried a lot of things and it's, you're still going round and round that revolving door. I will be helping delete the blind spots. And you're gonna learn from everybody that I work with, even if you don't raise your hand, um, it's, it's a powerful day and people walk away changed to the amazing, core. amazing. And, um, I'll put the link for that in the show notes, you guys, it's coming up. It's on January 13th, is that 18th. correct? 18th, 18th. January yeah. 18th. So yeah, click the link in the show notes. Um, we've got a special offer for you guys down in there for listening. And, um, and I hope you guys attend those little, those worksheets. Like I always tell my clients, I'm like, don't you dare ever underestimate the power of a personal development worksheet. Because when you have to answer stuff that you haven't been answering, that's when it finally happens. That's when you finally, you finally click. It's just like you said, the answers are inside of you waiting to come out. So until you actually do the work of answering questions from somebody who is a good coach that knows the right questions to ask. It's just going to stay in there. <laughs> so I love that. If, if people aren't in pain, but want to experience high speed healing and just go to their next level of waking mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. this, you don't have to be in pain to benefit. So right. many people, it, what, what the high speed energy healing does and the questioning process, it will help you uh, activate your intuition and take it to a new level. It helps with creativity, productivity, focus, concentration. Some of you may have heard about a flow state. That's what this does. Yep. So we've even seen it improve athletic ability. So there's a lot of reasons to attend and we Very record cool. the whole day. You're going to get the recording of it. So lots of reasons. So I'd love to share that with you and thank you for letting me get it out to more people. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming and sharing. And thank you for doing all of this work and being on the, in my opinion, like the cutting edge of this kind of work that is becoming increasingly popular. And so for being a leader in the world that can show the way for other people who are starting to wake up to these kind of, you know, it's, it's not go to the doctor and get your prescription for whatever. This is a way, in my opinion, way higher level of healing, but it takes courage to step outside of the box and say, Hey, like, actually we've got some other things for you to consider here. And I know that, you know, the power of it because you've seen so much healing and I have too from energy, you know, we spoke beforehand, like energetic healing has, it's like, okay, you want to call it magic? Well, yep, it is. That's what it feels like. So if you want to know what that feels like, maybe check out Deborah's event coming up. And again, Deborah, thank you so much. Just thank you so much for coming and sharing with us today. This gave me a lot of food for thought and I hope for my listeners too. So really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so very much. What a pleasure to meet you. And thanks everybody for listening and oh, just what a fun time. Yeah. Thank you.